Kenya has recently launched uh, Africa's first silicon savanna. And today with me in studio is Adam Modisset, a chief architect at the Konza Techno City, to just take us through what this really means for Africa. Thank you, Adam, for joining I'm us. I'm happy to be here. Great. So take us through, what does SHOP actually do? So SHOP is a, a very diverse firm. Mm -hmm. We're very international. We have projects ranging from uh, small buildings to enormous master plans in China and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, in the US, architecture and master planning are often in the same office. We're about 100 people, and, um, and Kanza is actually a good representative of what we do because there's a 500-acre master plan, and there's an individual building, which is the sales pavilion. Um, I've seen one of the major projects that uh, Shop Architects is dealing with is the Barclays Center in New York, you know, yes. a magnificent piece. H how did you come up with that? It's very difficult to get anything built in New York, mm -hmm. and we were approached by the developer um, and to essentially, in the, in the beginning, to try and get through the planning and approvals process and to come up with a vision. Mm -hmm. And as we, as we started working, we realized there was an opportunity to build something that was more than just a, a, a standard arena, something that would really be an icon for Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And we invested in it a lot in the office, in technology, and there was a limited budget for the project. There were a lot of constraints from the site. And we found a way to work with um, work with the zoning laws, work with the government, and to work with relatively low budget materials to come up with an iconic structure. Mm -hmm. And now um, it's, one of, it's recognized as one of the premier arenas in the US. Um, I recommend if you visit sometime, go yeah. to a Nets game there. Yeah. Because we realized we also saw that it was voted one of the, you know, uh, one of the first reasons actually to visit New York because yes. of that Barclays yes. uh, building. And now you come to Kenya to, you know, create Kansas City. Yes. Um, how is it going to be different and, you know, how is it going to be Africa's Silicon Savannah? So I, I think um, there's, there's a lot to touch on there. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of the examples I give is um, that I, we've discovered, and I, I think this actually relates even to the Barclays Center, is in building the Barclays Center, um, it's, it's very hard to get something iconic and special built in the U.S. because there's, there's entrenched ideas. There's a standard of doing business. There's a standard of construction. And everyone's used to that, and no one wants to, to innovate. Um, here in Kenya, we found actually the, the contractors and the architects are actually more open to innovation. The analogy I would give is, is landlines and cell phones. It's, for some people in the U.S., it was hard to go to a cell phone. Um, everyone's attached to their landlines. Here there's an opportunity to skip the landlines, go directly to cell phones. Mm -hmm. So we think with technology, um, both for um, the infrastructure of the city itself, for the building, there's an opportunity to, to leapfrog some of the standard practices that in some ways kind of hold us back in the US. Yeah. And let's see about the technological infrastructure being put in into this city and uh, what is the opportunity for Africa actually to host such smart cities? You know, one of the things that is really um, you know, as a designer that we're particularly excited about is the idea of making Kanza a livable city, mm -hmm. um, a sustainable city, both in the sense that it's a green city, but also it's one that as it grows, it will continue to be a, a livable city. And we, we recognize in Nairobi and in other places, um, traffic, congestion, air quality, um, street life or the lack of street life is one of the major issues. So we're designing into Kanza City um, you know, public transportation, um, making it walkable, creating a, a density and a street life and a vitality that will, as I said, be sustainable and be a place where, where people want to live. So in some ways, it's the combination of the social solutions and the technologi technological solutions that are really the most exciting. Great. Apart from Konza, any other interests you're having in Africa? There's, there's a number I'd love to talk about. If you have me back in a couple of months, I'll probably have some good stories. Sure. Um, yeah. One in particular, though, is mm -hmm. we're doing the Botswana Innovation Hub mm -hmm. um, in Botswana. And mm -hmm. this is, it's similar to, to Kanza. It's not a city. It's mm -hmm. an innovation hub. And it has um, about 40 plots. And we are doing the, the centermost plot, which is a combination of different technologies. But mm -hmm. it's a hub for innovation, for developing industries, to try and concentrate those in Botswana. Well, Great. And then apart from that, we're looking at, uh, of course, you sh setting up shop um, here yes. in Africa, perhaps maybe to just keep this technological uh, face going. Yes. Any plans for that? We don't have, we have yet to actually select a building. Um, and we, we've been so busy, it's almost been hard to move here. But I think now that the pavilion is under development, um, contracts are being signed, mm -hmm. I, I think we can look to start opening space in the coming months. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Adam, um, if you now look at Africa and you're seeing this development, where do you see us going, of course, with all this technological infrastructure coming up? It's hard to say. It's hard to provide a specific roadmap. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I, I can say there's an enormous amount of, of pent-up demand. Um, there's been a delay in, in bringing um, the, the, the services and the type of spaces where the technology industry can occupy. And, and from the firms that we've talked to, um, the major technological firms, they're really looking for a place like Kanza Techno City where they can, where they can really um, put down an anchor, put down business, and, and work. And I think as places like that are successful, they will become icons and, and really catalyze growth. I think Kanza Techno City um, is a large, ambitious project, but I think there'll be smaller versions like this um, that'll look to emulate Kanza Techno City. Because what I've seen with multinationals coming up is that they yeah. want the same standards they have, say, in you know, the headquarters in, exactly. say, in New York and coming into Africa and having the same there. Exactly. So are we going to benchmark with this in the future? I think, yes, and I think that's a complex question because mm -hmm. obviously they're looking for office space yeah. that, is, um, that is on par with you know, mm -hmm. world standards. Mm -hmm. But I think they're also looking for um, the residents and the, uh, or I, I should say their, their workers, are looking for places they can live and work and, and, um, and live in a, in a place where there's an exchange of, an ide exchange of ideas mm -hmm. that is comparable to world-class cities. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I live in New York City, yeah. and, um, and it's not just about the office buildings. It's about the community and the, inter inter the actions, interactions yes. in the community. Sure.